Wikimedia Open Science Fellowship Program, or as it's called in, as it's called in German, the, um, das Fellowship Freies Wissen, uh, is a program that is funded by the Wikimedia Deutschland, the Stifterverband, which is also a German funding um, organization, and the Volkswagen Foundation. Um, the target audience is uh, doctoral students, postdocs, and also junior professors. So we have a quite wide variety of people that can get the funding. Um, and there are further partners involved from Germany, which are the Technische Informationsbibliothek, uh, the Museum of Natural History in Berlin, the um, Computing Center of the uh, Free University in Berlin, and the Göttingen State and University Library, which are involved by offering or by sending in experts that help um, in providing webinars and um, give input in the workshops. So what is the objective of this program? The objective is, um, plainly and shortly put, open up the scientific progress. It's in, and this involves many steps and, and many parts. And um, in core, it tries to enable young researchers <laughs> to apply open science themselves in their own work and also to act as multipliers in their own institutions for the idea of open science. Um, so the that is, so this also implicits a, a small, um, how do you say it, a, a small, uh, so this also implies that when you apply for it, you, sh you should be someone that is like employed or um, has a position at the university because they want to have multipliers for the idea of open science. Um, then the um, program also facilitates the exchange and also the networking of the participants because um, you get to know each others and in every round and also you get to know the older participants because they still are staying in the network and they're also invited to the events taking place in Berlin. Um, and so the final objective then is to gradually advance the dissemination of science into and research into the public so that it's not just um, uh, for scientists to do so, but also that the public gets to know what is happening in the scientific progress. So if you're interested in applying to this program and wondering what is in it for you, um, it's like four points. So the first one is that you get eight months of mentoring, which was really nice um, because you have, you're in very small groups. So it's two or three mentees per mentor. And you really have the regular meetings. We did them so three times at the, um, at the meetings in Berlin, but also digital meetings via Skype or other means. Then you also get qualification, which means that um, there are the workshops in Berlin, taking place in Berlin, then there are webinars offered and um, you also get the um, opportunity to, to exchange with the mentors and especially the um, other fellows of the same uh, round. Then there's also a small financial support, which is 5,000 euros you, you can freely use as you want. And you also get travel and accommodation costs reimbursed for um, the events in Berlin and also for specific other events that are like um, communicated via the um, mailing list. And then of course there's the networking part which maybe at the beginning isn't that important but the longer you're in there it's um, getting more and more important, especially if it's built up. Um, so to, to get an overview on what is funded by Wikimedia Deutschland, um, I created a, a small yeah, graph which visualizes which disciplines are funded. So we have the four different rounds because um, the program started in 2016 and currently the fourth round is ongoing. And so what you can see the first um, greenish colors up to here or up to here are all social, 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 social and sciences and political sciences and economics. 
Uh, then the reddish part or the first reddish block is um, psychology and neurosciences. Um, which I th they, they take most of the part. So these, these two disciplines have always uh, are about half. Then um, there's the, the greenish part, which is uh, biology and related disciplines. And then uh, we're starting to disperse a bit with um, art, uh, information sciences, also um, jurisdiction. Then we have physics, um, some linguists and uh, digital humanities in the last round, which I was taking part in, there was me and another girl um, doing digital humanities projects. Mm. Yeah. And so let's have a look at the uh, page of the program or a specific part, the program, um, the page of the current fellows. Uh, so this is a round from this year. Then we have the round from last year and here's the year before. And um, there was one, uh, so if you, if you click on the, on the, uh, on the groups of, of each year, you get the list of the participants and you also get the list to the, um, or get to the project page. And um, they're very interesting and, and different wide ranging projects. So for example, I remember in the, um, uh, at, at the first meeting in, in Berlin, I was taking part, there was one girl taking part who was um, talking about her project where she established a network um, or a thing called call up a scientist, which means that you can, uh, register there and if any schools or, or anybody else needs a scientist they can like go into that platform and try to find someone who matches what they need and then um, you can connect the public with the scientists. There's also another project uh, which I found quite interesting from the funding thing is that uh, somebody used the 5000 euros to be able to join on an expedition ship and then like published the whole process on the ship and what was going on. And uh, I think it was to the uh, Antarctic or Arctic. Um, yeah. So then, why? No. Yeah, so for my personal experience, I was a fellow last year. And I had a project called um, a linked and open biography for a Aegean glyptic in the Bronze Age, which, uh, which is a horrible long title to plainly say that I was aiming for digitizing a, a bibliography about ancient seals in Wikidata and then try to get it out and visualized. And so, um, I did not have much contact with open science before, only just heard a bit sometimes about it, especially I, at university, I never heard about it. And um, so it was like thrown a bit into the, well, not so cold water, but uh, still cold water. Um, and I really tried to open up everything in the course of this project. And this is why uh, I have a very extensive project page describing uh, what I was doing with my, um, during the project. And I also opened up um, the different things you had to submit. So first my um, application, then uh, uh, you have to deliver uh, a in-between report and then an end report. And there also was uh, the, the second event in Berlin was also involving um, a thing that was a bit open to the public in the National, uh, Natural History Museum in Berlin. And so this was all open and visibly and described and you can have a look and also try to look at the application and see what got me in there. I'm not sure what got me in there, but I got it. <laughs> uh, then other things uh, I also noted down, for example, is just a collection of links, which might not be of much use to anybody else, but I thought, well, it's part of my work in progress, so why not put it there and then maybe somebody finds it useful. If not, doesn't hurt anyone. <coughs> um, another thing I also discovered 
while uh, working in this project is that the Wikimedia programs and tools are really powerful. So for example, um, the page you're seeing here is part of the Wikiversity project, which is a project um, that aims at um, publicly um, gathering university teaching course material. The uh, fellow program website is also on Wikiversity. Then all the project pages are available on Wiki Wikiversity. Um, then something you can also, or you quickly get to notice is that um, the Wiki syntax is more powerful than you thought of because there's a lot of plugins. And so, for example, I was able to establish a timeline, which I, well, I did the things in there, but I never finished it uh, on the project page. Um, then the other thing I, yeah. I discovered in the course of the project is the project Wikidata, which is another Wikimedia project to collect structured data because I think most people know Wiki, Wikipedia and maybe one or two other things, but then there's a whole lot more and Wikidata is like the, the spine of Wikipedia because it gets the structured data that, is, that can then be displayed in tabular environments and uh, you can also use another um, um, projects and so on. Um, yeah, and this is a, so at some point my, my mentor recommended, te recommended me not to just have this project page on Wikiversity, but also to provide a new project page on Wikidata because since the, the main tool of the project is to use, um, uh, is to use Wikidata, it makes sense to have it there. And maybe just to show you the, um, the output of what I created. Oh, it's not working. Classic. <laughs> Should be working because it's my own page, okay. Um, so this is the thing I produced. Um, the information you see here is all fetched from Wikidata and then displayed in a nice interface where you can then, for example, um, search uh, for some facets or also make a full text uh, search in all the fields. Um, it's not done yet because um, I think I only managed to enter about 50, um, 50 bibliographic entries into Wikidata and I'm st still stuck in the process of um, um, of preparing the, the large amount and to import it um, automatically. And another thing I would like to show you is the tool Scolia. Mm. Du, du, du. Die Suchfunktion funktioniert hier nicht. So this is the link to the Wikidata page itself, which, uh, which has a data set. And then in the data set, we have a list of the, um, this data set is like the core seed for all the bibliographic entries. And then there's this tool called Scolia. Um, Import list. Ah, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a thing that already existed and it was built to visualize um, bibliographic entries in Wikidata and you can choose a topic to, to display. You can also choose authors or um, specific publication types, for example. And then this on the fly fetches all the information that is stored in Wikidata and this plays it in a very nice way, um, especially, for example, with this graphic visualizations where you can have a look at what was published in which year and 
which authors published and you can also see the collaboration graphs um, in, uh, with the authors and also the topics that occur and that should be yeah, visible here. So then you can see which topics occur together and uh, if things have some coordinates on it, they are also displayed on a map. So that's um, just to give you an, 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 an example on what is possible when, um, when you get the chance to work on a project in this uh, fellowship. Um, yeah, so when does this uh, fellowship happen? So it's every year since 2016. And the call for application usually opens up on February or April. And I really recommend you, so if you're interested and if you think you have something that is like small enough uh, you want to treat and you want to learn about open science, then go ahead and apply. It's, it's a really nice experience. I then had a look into other funding opportunities for open science and I must say I didn't find that much. So there's the Mozilla fellowships. Uh, which are active, um, but it's a bit, uh, so from the criteria they list, it seems to be a bit harder to get them because they're really looking for like experts and people established in their field. Um, then there's also from the Open Knowledge Foundation, the Panton Fellowships, um, but it seems that the program only run once or twice uh, until 2014, I could not find any new information. So I would say we want more of these. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? Okay, so thank you, Martina. Thank mm -hmm. you.